years ago when I was in my 20s, I had a convertible that I absolutely loved. Um, this car was like my dream car as a 20 year old. Um, I was living up in New Jersey at the time. I moved down to Florida, I got rid of the car. And uh, I had a few other vehicles. I had a Jeep Liberty before I bought the Wrangler. Um, and I kept getting that itch to get a convertible again, but I didn't want to give up driving an SUV. So what's next? Um, and I convinced myself to buy a Wrangler. Um, I really wanted a convertible SUV and something to have some fun in. I always knew that I wanted to lift it and put bigger tires on it because it looked cool, <laughs> but I never in my life dreamed that I would get into doing some of the stuff that I've done with her, places I've been, friends I have met. Um, the Jeep community as a whole in our area is just amazing and I didn't have a clue as to any of that. Um, it was probably about a year or so after I had bought it that I started looking um, at doing some modifications. Like I said, little stuff. Um, I added some side steps, some grab bars, wanted to lift it, started looking around. Um, that's kind of when I stumbled into Tampa Jeep Crew um, and started to go to some different events and see what the Jeep life was all about. There was always a group that met down at the causeway um, on Sundays, on the weekends, just to hang out and go to the beach. So I would go down and hang out there and met some friends that way. Um, started to go to a couple of different socials. Um, finally decided what I wanted to do as far as a lift. Um, my first suspension was a zone lift. Um, nothing crazy. I didn't really anticipate that I'd be doing a whole lot of off-roading or trail riding with her, but something that would, you know, do if I had to. Um, I then went on my very first trail ride to some place that you probably shouldn't be going to. Um, uh, it was there that I met uh, a girlfriend of mine, Doris, um, who I've become very good friends with. And we kind of joke around that her and myself and a few of other of us girls kind of grew up doing this together. Um, our Jeeps were babies then. <laughs> um, I had such a blast and I tell everybody, um, a lot of the newbies that I talk to that get into doing this, that off-road bug bites really hard. Um, and once I got a taste for getting her off-road and having a little bit of fun, I just wanted to do more. So that's kind of how it started. Um, she's a 2013. Uh, so I bought it. I joke around saying that it's my midlife crisis because I was 39 when I bought her. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure she's never going anywhere. Um, I'm probably going to be buried in it. Um, she is my daily driver. She's got 146,000 miles on her now. Um, probably sometime this coming year that'll be retired. Um, she's not going anywhere, but she won't be my daily ride to and from work and just turn into my fun weekend toy. Um, so I've, I've had a blast with her in some of the places that I've taken her and places that I've been. Um, she's been all over the Southeast. We've been to Georgia, uh, Tennessee a couple times, Kentucky, um, Alabama. Um, and last year, uh, had, was just absolutely blessed with a trip to Moab with, uh, you know, everybody that had, we had such a great time. Um, Moab is pretty incredible. Uh, and I've told everybody that it is worth every penny you will spend to get there. Um, it is, should be on every Jeepers must must-do list. Um, hopefully planning another trip out there for next year. Um, I think we'd also like to do a little bit of Colorado while we're out there. Um, a bucket list of mine is Black Bear Pass um, and something I'd really like to do. Um, it's the, the scenery from what I understand is unlike anything. Um, I've had a, a, a lot of really cool off-road experiences. Um, some have been just stuff that I never um, thought I could even accomplish. Um, Hell's Gate out in Moab was probably the biggest epic one out there. Um, the trail itself was, was cool, um, but the obstacle was definitely the highlight of that day. Um, there was also a, my very first out of state wheeling experience was something that I like to share, um, especially with my fellow Jeep sisters. Um, it was definitely an experience that I chalk up to don't judge a book by its cover. Um, that was my very first Jeep Jamboree that I've ever done. 
And I don't know, for those who've not experienced a jamboree there, unlike most Jeep events, um, you have to actually go through a day before um, an inspection. Your Jeep has to go through an inspection. You have to kind of give a list of the modifications that you have and have done um, so that you qualify for the trails that you want to do. Um, and we got out there, I was with um, Clinton Terry Smith and uh, Roy and Debbie Price. And we lined up for our inspection and we had picked the two hardest trails that we wanted to sign up for. I couldn't remember the names of them. Um, we go through inspection, I'm third and third or fourth in line. And the guy who comes up to the inspection and he's walking around the Jeep and he sits there, he's got his little clipboard. He asks you what, what your suspension is, what your tire size is, whether or not you have a winch, are you locked front and rear? Um, a couple other little things, what your experience is. Have you done a Jeep Jamboree before? And I said, no, I hadn't. Um, and he looked at me and he says, well, what trails do you want to do? And I said, I can't remember the names of them. I said, I just remember they were the two hardest. And he looks at me. And he looks at my Jeep and he looks at his little clipboard and he looks at me again and he says, well, your Jeep is capable. And my mouth just dropped to the floor. Now, I, that was my first out of state wheeling experience. I get it. Um, but I was not new to being off road. Um, and I said that to him and he's like, well, what have you done? Where have you been? And I'm like, well, you know, just some events around Florida and things like that. But I, you know, I'm not... I'm not a, a total newbie at this. And he walked around my Jeep again and he looked down at his clipboard and he looked at me and said, all right, I'll, I'll approve you. He was definitely hesitant to do so. And I'm like, okay, all right, well, it's gonna be one of those trips. So um, we went in and we signed up for the, the two hardest trails. The jamborees, the way the trails work, you are all day on a trail. Um, you, there's a break for lunch. Um, so like we picked one trail for Friday, one trail for Saturday. We picked Friday to do the hardest trail because it was supposed to rain on Saturday and we didn't really want to be stuck on the hardest one on Saturday. We were at Land Between the Lakes in Kentucky. Um, not super hard. Um, again, it was my first out of state wheeling experience, so I didn't quite know what to expect. So it was definitely difficult than more of the stuff I've done in Florida. Um, but now that I've had some experience, I realize it really wasn't that hard to begin with. <laughs> Um, it, uh, we get a, we line up the next morning to get ready to go out on the trail and at the Jamborees, you are outfitted with both a leader and a gunner for the trail and they allow about 15 to 20 Jeeps per trail ride. So you're limited and then you're guided. Um, so our trail guide comes walking up to introduce himself and it's the exact same guy who did my inspection the morning before. And I just went, oh my God, are you kidding? Um, I, we kind of laughed about it. Terry and I kind of chuckled as we stood off to the side and went, wow, really? So we get on the trail and we're probably getting close to a break for lunch. And uh, or maybe about a third of the way through the morning or so. And we get to a spot on the trail and there are three hills. Um, and he stops us. He has everybody come up to the front because he wants us to see what we're about to tackle. And he explains to us that there are three ways to get up to continue the trail uh, up this hill. And he said, the middle is the hardest. Um, to the right is the moderate, and to the left is the girly way. Um, and I went, wow, okay. <laughs> so we sit there and um, I'm contemplating which, which direction I wanna take. Um, all 15 Jeeps made it up and over these hills. There were only two that made it up the middle, which was the hardest and that was Dilly Gaff and myself. Um, there were several that attempted, but we were the only two that made it over. And then I felt like I was standing on a pedestal a thousand feet high. Um, I, I was flying like a kite the rest of the day. At the end of the day, we um, kind of ended the trail and everybody goes up to the trail leaders and the gunners and thanks them and blah, blah, blah. And I walked up to the trail leader. I couldn't keep my mouth closed. <laughs> I just couldn't. <laughs> and I walked up to him and I thanked him. I said, I had a really great day. This was amazing. So much fun. And I said, but I want to tell you something. I was like, I don't know if you remember, but yesterday you were very hesitant to approve me for this trail. You told me my Jeep was capable and your tone led me to believe that you didn't think that I was. Um, and I said, I wanted to let you know that um, I really don't think it's in your best interest to judge a book by its cover. 
and that you shouldn't look at a woman that way um, just because she's involved in a hobby that's predominantly men. And uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. He kind of he kind of hung his head a little bit and didn't really say too much other than thank you. Um, but made I, I felt better after I walked away. I this one. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, you know, it was then I, I kind of after that I got involved in more of not involved, but I, I became really good friends with a couple of women in our community here locally. Um, and started, you know, doing some other things and doing, doing some wheeling that I didn't really ever think that I would, um, and, and trying things that I look back at now and was like, wow, um, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate to wheel with a really great group of friends who push me, um, and know, know how to test my limits a little bit. And every time it seems that you get to that point where um, you try something and it just gives you that sense of accomplishment and, and adrenaline rush that you just want to do more and, and, and go higher or go bigger. And it's, it's really pretty, pretty awesome. Um, two years ago, gosh, I can't believe it's been two years already. Um, one of the women here locally, uh, Stacy, started um, what is now known as Seven Slot Sisterhood, originally Jeep Girl Nation. Um, and I've been involved with it pretty much from day one. Um, and I, I commend her for the camaraderie of, of uh, well, sisterhood of women that she has put together and the things that we've been able to um, empower each other to do. Um, it's really a great feeling to be a part of a community like that and to have made so many amazing friends um, and to get to do some pretty cool stuff. Um, I attribute a lot of that to my Jeep. You know, I, I joke around saying, everybody asks, why, um, why Jersey? Why is it Jersey? Well, I grew up in New Jersey um, and it's where I'm from. It's a big part of who I am, much like what my Jeep is. Um, she's a little feisty. She's a little loud. She's a little obnoxious. Um, kind of like I am. <laughs> and, 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 you know, she's, she's given me a lot of, um, adventure, um, a lot of confidence. Um, I've grown into that next, I don't know, next step of life with her, next chapter of life. Um, and, and we've had a lot of fun together. Um, I, I, I often say I have a pretty unhealthy attachment to my vehicle <laughs> and people who have a Jeep understand that people who don't look at me like I'm crazy. Um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I definitely enjoy it though. And it's something I look forward to and can look forward to continue doing for many years to come.